Welcome to episode two of Weird Coffee Science, and today I'm going to try and convince you to go and put some coffee beans in the microwave. Let me explain. Now, this all started with the V60 video, actually, where I noticed that brew temperature and sort of flow rate in the sort of drawdown phase were, were kind of connected. That the cooler a brew was, the slower it flowed. And I wondered, well, what did ground coffee temperature do to flow rate in espresso? I set up a little experiment. I took my niche grinder and I dialed it in with just room temperature coffee. And then I took some coffee beans and I heated them up in a microwave to about 60 degrees Celsius. I ground those and I pulled a shot and that shot ran way faster, like seven, eight seconds faster, which was surprising. Now to rule something out, I ground some beans that were room temperature and then I heated the grounds up uh, to 60 and I brewed those to see what the impact was of, of the puck. Was it that the puck was hotter or something else? Well, that shot brewed at a normal kind of brew time. So clearly hotter beans were grinding differently. Now to test the opposite, I, I made some coffee beans very cold in the freezer. Those shots pulled way slower. But interestingly, when I, when I ground some room temperature beans and I, I made those freezing cold, that shot also ran slower, but not as slow. So clearly a very cold puck does influence brew temperature, but very cold beans influence grind profile even more. Just for summary, here's a kind of quick matrix of the experiments that I did, just so you can see bean temperatures and then brew times as a result. This is not an entirely new idea. In 2015, in the World Brewster Championships, one of the finalists, uh, Dawn Chan from Hong Kong, was heating his beans up before grinding uh, using a water bath. He'd said, I think, that he got another percentage point of extraction, uh, which, is, which is kind of a lot to go from, say, 19% to 20% is a big jump in extraction. So clearly, he noticed something too. What I also think about, though, is that loads of people I know like to freeze samples of roasted coffee beans to sort of preserve them for as long as possible. But if they're grinding them frozen, they, they are likely producing more fines. Now, you may have seen a paper saying that, that frozen beans produce less fines, but as I recall, they were using way, way, way lower temperatures than the typical minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius that you would see in a domestic freezer. This all led me to one final key experiment. One thing that I think you might be interested in too. But before that, I just need to tell you about this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Now, if you need to build a beautiful website, I would strongly recommend Squarespace. In fact, I needed to build a website. I needed to build a new place to explain what it is that I do for a living, as well as to have a home for weird coffee science. And it was so easy to take one of their templates and then just to make it mine. It was quick to build out a rich and detailed site full of information and what I love about it is that there's nothing more to patch or upgrade or install. I don't have to worry about maintenance of it over the next few years. If you want to build a website or you want to just pick up your own domain, then use the link in my description and my discount code to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So on to the key experiment. Is being able to grind finer potentially through using hotter coffee beans, well, is that useful? Is that good? Does that make better tasting espresso? So we set up an experiment. We dialed in a regular room temperature coffee, and then we dialed in against it coffee beans that were 60 degrees Celsius. Now, one interesting note here is that taking a 60 degrees Celsius coffee and grinding it immediately brought the temperature down to about 45 degrees Celsius. Clearly, that contact with that large piece of metal that was room temperature, that grinder, pulled a load of heat out of the grounds, and that was certainly interesting. But anyway, we let them both both equilibrate in temperature, which is why they were ground at the same time, uh, and pulled shots. And thanks to Gareth from Square Mile for pulling the shots so that I could taste these blind. Now this was really, really interesting. The differences were quite distinct every time we tasted it, though we never really quite managed to nail exactly the same flow rates for the shots. However, the beans that were hotter when they were ground did stand out. In the tests we did, I'm not sure really how much aroma we might be losing. I'm not sure uh, if we lost some crema through the excess degassing. I, I don't really know that. But, but I did prefer the shots that were from the hotter coffee beans. And it might be just that they were more extracted. Their texture was noticeably different, a little bit richer, softer, rounder. You can try this at home. If you have a microwave and you have uh, a grinder that can grind through a single dose uh, very easily, if you've got a hand grinder or something like the niche that kind of grinds to order, then you can try this too. One thing I'd recommend, don't brew straight away. Right, like the, the, the ground coffee does need to come down in temperature to 30, 35 for it to taste good. When the grounds were at sort of 45 plus, 
they didn't taste great, right? I, I, I think the shot equilibrates in temperature much quicker, right? Everything reaches brew temperature much sooner, and that doesn't taste great. It has a kind of muddiness, a kind of over-extraction that I don't particularly enjoy. Because of that kind of cooling phase, I'm not sure how you could commercialize this. And I do think about the, the maybe the positive impact of, of a heating element in something like the Mythos One, where I maybe like those shots quite a lot. I don't know, I don't know. I'd love your thoughts and your feedback. Now there is a dedicated page under Weird Coffee Science for this topic on my website. I'll leave a link to it down below. Uh, I'm gonna try and centralize any discussion there, post any links to other relevant resources. Or you can leave a comment here on YouTube too, if you want. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Uh, I'll try and centralize stuff there, but obviously feel free to... Fuck you, train.